this tutorial is looking at taxes and looking at taxes and how they are used by governments to collect funds and how the government uses those funds for, for spending, sometimes on public goods, sometimes to create market failures. So just to start with, this is called the circular flow diagram, which you've seen before. We're just sort of a simplified version of the two main sectors, households and firms on this side. Taxes are used, and they're an example of what's called a withdrawal. So the money is captured from here. The flow down the bottom, remember, is called income. And taxes is one example of money that comes out from the circular flow into the government sector. Later, government spending or transfer payments comes back out of the sector this way. So we can commonly know it less G. So there's two types of taxes that we're interested in. There's one type of tax called direct taxes and the other is called indirect taxes. Firstly, direct taxes are taxes that you owe, that you pay directly to the government, mainly on your income. Uh, it traditionally is a pay as you earn approach. So as you pay, you send money to the government, which is your contribution to the income taxes. This, this category here. The second character, character sorry, category is called indirect taxes. And that is taxes that you pay when you purchase something, but the company or the, the firm pays it on your behalf. So for instance, if you're out shopping and purchase a bottle of wine, you might purchase the bottle of wine from a local convenience store. The convenience store itself will pay a percentage tax on the sale to the government. So, pretending if you pay $20 for a bottle of wine, there's two types of indirect taxes. Firstly, there might be a something called a sales tax or a value added tax. Some countries, that's a percentage of the in, a percentage of the price of the product, say 10%. That's paid by the firm on your behalf to the government. Or there might be another type of indirect tax, such as an excise duty. Sometimes these are used by governments to discourage the, uh, the consumption of types of products as a way to correct market failures. For instance, these petrol taxes are a good example of excise duties. Cigarette taxes and alcohol taxes are all considered to be part of excise duties. And so that's another percentage on the product as well. That might be another 10% tax. So these taxes together, In this case, it makes up about $4 of the price of the product. That's paid by the firm to the government. So the government collects two types of taxes, direct taxes and indirect taxes, and it uses that money to uh, provide public goods to the economy. So there's two diagrams on the whiteboard that illustrate the two different types of indirect taxes. So the two different types of indirect taxes are classified on how they are calculated. Firstly, if the tax is calculated as, as a percentage of the sales price, so that's similar to the previous example as petrol, then it's considered to be what's called an ad valorem tax. Conversely, a specific tax is an example of a tax that is like a per unit. So when you purchase one unit of the product, you pay a, a dollar or a two dollar tax on that product. This one here, percentage tax is a proportionate, these are more like a unit tax on the product. And so we describe these two things quite differently. Firstly, a tax is imposed on the supply curve. And it therefore it changes the quantity demanded that consumers have. So in this example, what a, what a specific tax does is it adds, uh, it kind of adds a cost of production to firms. So when the cost of production the end result is that the price will go up at each and every quantity. So we get this new supply curve called maybe supply plus tax, S1, which is vertically above the previous supply curve. And at the new, at the new equilibrium, we have we have a new price, and obviously we have a new quantity. The 
that is slightly lower than what it was before. So in this case, the tax is the vertical distance between the two curves. And we can show this in two different ways. We can show it here with a simple arrow between And this is our specific tax between the two curves, where it's also between the new equilibrium and down to the previous supply curve there. And as you can see, we can show the tax on the, uh, on the vertical axis as well. So this is our, And what's interesting to look at is, is how much does the government collect? Well, if you think about it over here, it's well, the government collects a certain dollar per product that's sold. So it's the value of the tax times the quantity of the good that's sold. So if we're thinking about it in a, visually, we're thinking about it as being a square. So in this circumstance, this square, so the value of the tax here, this square here, represents the area of the tax that the government collects, um, shown as a rectangle on the side. If the tax is taxed as a percentage, not as an ad value tax, we show it slightly differently. And we show it with a supply curve that splits and goes apart. Okay. And this is because the difference between, say, here and here, might be the 10%, which is also the same as a 10% change in the price slightly further up the supply curve. Okay? So remember, these are a, is a proportionate taxes, these are specific taxes. And the same result is shown on the graph here. I'll just quickly demonstrate. Is that I've drawn the curve slightly differently. The demand curve for this type of tax is slightly steeper, the gradient, compared to this curve here. The explanation behind it is, is I'm trying to illustrate the idea, maybe this is an inelastic, the demand for the product is inelastic. Which, which does make sense, we're talking about cigarettes or alcohol or, or petrol. The demand does tend to be inelastic and the efficient. The coefficient will tend to be less than one which is why we can see here there's a proportion that the difference in the change in the quantity is less than proportionate to the change in the price. And we show this, we show this graphically really quickly, the same idea is this arrow here is the value of the tax and this rectangle represents the revenue that the government receives from the taxation. So really quickly, we've summarised the two different types of taxes, specific taxes and ad valorem taxes, and we've talked about why government uses them in different ways. Just really quickly, we're talking about the effects on consumers. So remember we've got different stakeholders in our economy. The three main stakeholders are Our consumers, our producers, and also in this case, the government. The government effect is quite the government effect is pretty obvious. When the introduction of taxes, the government receives an increase in revenue. The effect on consumers, well, the price has obviously gone up the government's added a tax to each of the products. Therefore, the quantity demanded by consumers has decreased, which makes sense. Producers is the same effect. Producers is having to pay, they receive a different price from the market, and their quantity that they're willing to supply to the market is also falling. So from this point, we can also get a little bit more complicated and talk about well, who actually pays a bigger burden of the tax compared to another. And this is the difference between a standard level economics and higher level. I'm just going to really quickly touch on it. 
And we can see from this first diagram here, at the original equilibrium, the burden of tax, the consumer surplus, was this, was this upper triangle going all the way around this big shape here. Producers was split quite evenly down to the bottom to this bottom triangle. So if we talk about it here, producers and the consumer surplus is nearly identical. But what changed? Who lost out when the tax changed? Well, as you can see with the green hatched triangles, each group lost a bit. Producers lost this little bit because they were forced to pay the tax between here and here. So they now only receive this bottom triangle, which I will try shading red. And consumers were the same. They forced to pay a higher price, but at a lower quantity, so they, their additional satisfaction is decreased as well. The difference is received by the government. So the government's receiving the green, the red and the red are going to the consumer producer surplus. So we're left with a little triangle, which is interesting. This black, different colour. Our last triangle is called the dead weight loss, or the loss of efficiency that exists because of the tax. The tax has increased the price, altering the surpluses for each stakeholder, consumers and producers. But there is a leftover that just disappears. So this is the loss of efficiency because of taxes. And we can illustrate this quite similarly on this graph here. But you notice in this case, The loss is a little bit different. The, the, the split of the triangles is different. The consumer surplus has a slightly bigger triangle compared to the loss of the producer surplus. And the hint here is it relates to the elasticities of the curves. In this case, the demand for our first tax, the PED was relatively, we'd say it was relatively elastic. It was kind of greater than one, maybe unit elastic. So the proportions are quite equal. If we go across to this curve where it was inelastic, the split is different. Consumers will pay a higher proportion of the tax compared to the producers. That's because firms know they can increase the price and consumers will be just as willing proportionately to pay for the extra product. So producers themselves will pay less of the burden of the tax and pass on the cost to their consumers. So when we start talking about this, consumers a loss of consumer and producer surplus, then we're starting to get into evaluation aspects of taxes. And the final evaluation is the, is the loss of efficiency because of the taxes and the dead weight loss. So I hope that summarises taxes kind of quickly and provides a good basis for the start of this topic.